Adaptive modulation is a feature included in the Orbit MCR 303 firmware release. Two new parameters are added to the NX radio configuration. They are ADR mode and ADR threshold, which stands for adaptive data rate and threshold, respectively. ADR mode has two settings, 125 to 250 kilobits per second and 500 to 1250 kilobits per second. These are modem speeds for the NX radio interface. ADR threshold is the RSI threshold used to determine if the radio operates at the faster or slower modem speed. For example, the ADR threshold is set to minus 70, and four remotes are set up for ADR mode 500 to 1250 kbps. Two remotes have a weak signal below minus 70. Two remotes have a strong signal above minus 70. Therefore, the weak signal remotes will operate at the modem 500 kilobits per second, and strong remotes will operate at the modem 1250 kilobits per second. It's important to note that this adaptive modulation feature only affects the upstream link, remote to access point. The access point's downstream link will use the lowest data rate. To configure these settings using the web, log in to the remote as admin and click Interfaces on the left. Click NX Radio, then Advanced Config. The Advanced Config will have the ADR settings at the bottom. Set the ADR mode and ADR threshold for each remote unit here, and then save the configuration. Repeat this on the access point unit. Log in, navigate to Interfaces, NX Radio, Advanced Config, then set the ADR mode. ADR threshold does not need to be set to anything specific on the access point, therefore you do not need to adjust this parameter. Apply the configuration by pressing the Save button. Using the console, log in as admin and enter configuration mode by typing configure. Then enter the command set interfaces interface nx radio nx config advanced config adr mode followed by the mode you wish to use. If this is your remote unit, you can also set up the adr threshold parameter. Commit the configuration when ready. LQI is a metric of the quality of the received signal. Unlike RSSI, which simply measures signal strength and does not care about signal quality, LQI doesn't care about signal strength. It is concerned with the correctness of the signal. This means how easily can the received signal be correctly demodulated. In general, the lower the LQI, the better the quality. LQI should be used as a relative measurement. Precision is fairly loose and subject to variation from radio to radio and modulation format. For each modem, LQI means something different because each modulation has varying received bandwidths, which can affect LQI calculations. All that being said, we still haven't answered the question of, what is a good LQI? We've done an experiment and generated this table you can use to check LQI to determine if it's good or not. How should you read this table? First off, the LQI on modems 1000W and 1250 are usually low. If you see an LQI value, then a signal is present. Due to the receiver's wide bandwidth in 1000, 1000W, and 1250 modems, the dynamic range is lower, which typically resolves on a low LQI. For the remaining modems, pristine means in an absolutely perfect signal environment, the best LQI will be less than or equal to the number in the table. Usable means the signal quality is good and the radio should be able to demodulate correctly. However, if LQI averages are approaching this limit, then one could expect there to be errors. Ideally, average LQI should fall somewhere in between the two values shown for each modem. Another note on modems and distance. The lower the kbps, the further the units may be separated, also known as lower the sensitivity. A 125 kbps modem can reach out the farthest, while the 1250 kbps modem would be the shortest. The orbit will support up to 7 hops storm forward to extend these distances, although latency must be considered with each additional hop. To view the LQI parameter from the web GUI, navigate to your MCR900 access point and log in using the administrator password. On the left, click Interfaces, 
then NX Radio. Click NX Radio and scroll to Connected Remotes. Each entry in this table is the remote connected to your access point. You can identify each remote by the IP address or MAC address. The column AVG LQI is listed here. Lastly, scroll down to Active Channels to view the LQI for each available frequency the access point is running. This can be used to determine if there is an interfering radio on a specific frequency. You can then prevent the AP from hopping on that channel by using Avoided Frequencies under the NX Radio Interface Advanced Configuration Settings. To view the LQI parameter from the command line, log in as admin and enter the following command. Show interfaces-state interface NX Radio NX-config connected-remotes. You may want to use the pipe tab and pipe repeat command to make this look nice. To view the access point's active channel list, enter this command. Show interfaces-state interfaces NX Radio NX-config active-channels. Lastly, keep in mind that this is a relative measurement. Please do not make any hard decisions based on this metric. Systems obviously are not the same, and dialing the system in may take a little configuring based on the noise floor, data type, and data volume. I hope this video was helpful for you. For additional information, please visit our website at www.gemds.com.